this episode, we're going to take a look at our Ruby on Rails application using Devise and see what we need to do to get it more compliant with the General Data Protection Regulation, or the GDPR. So as a disclaimer, this episode is not going to cover everything that's required by the GDPR to make your Ruby on Rails application compliant. However, there is one bit that is a bit more difficult, especially if you're using something like Devise, just because there is so much hidden, quote, magic that goes on with Devise and overriding some of the things to change its functionality or how it interacts can be quite difficult. So that's one of the main things that we're going to be looking at today. And I am also not a lawyer, and reading this lawyer speak is very difficult. So this PDF document is the regulation that has been put in place, and it went into effect in April of 2016. However, it's becoming enforceable on May 25th, 2018. So it is a 261-page document, so I'm not even going to try to interpret all of this. But in a nutshell, the GDPR is there to protect the user. So in my opinion, the main points of this regulation is to protect the end users of a website or service and to protect their data. So it makes sure that companies that have had bad practices in the past, they are taking the matter serious in protecting their client data so that it's not easily leaked or the preventative measures are put in place, as well as the right to be forgotten. And the right to be forgotten, if I understand it correctly, is that a user can request the data that a company or website has on them, and then also request for that data to be expunged from their network, and that includes any kind of logs, the databases, or backups. However, I think that there is something with the payments where you do have to keep a certain amount of information for a period of time. I believe it's three years. So even if you get a request to be forgotten, you legally can't delete the data until after a certain amount of time. So your best bet, if you need to fully understand all of this, is to get a lawyer and to have them parse through this or maybe a specialist on the GDPR to make sure that you're being compliant. So the same merchant services that I use for Drift and Ruby, I also found that they had posted a really good guideline for the GDPR. It is a very well formatted document and it is for informational purposes only. It is not legal advice and neither is this episode. Because I don't know fully what all is entailed with the GDPR, I just know a lot of the highlight points, then you may still want to consult a lawyer to make sure that everything is compliant. However, this article does have some really good points where even though this is a European regulation, if your company is outside of Europe, it still applies to you if your end users are in Europe. So even if you're in the United States, this is something that you have to take into consideration if you're going to have any users in Europe. And the main points around this is the information that you're collecting, being transparent about it, and how you're going to use that information. And finally, on this Stripe guide, they have a checklist for your business for just some of the key points that you may want to make sure that you are covering and just some questions that you're answering to make sure that you're compliant. And again, this is not legal advice, but it is something that Stripe has published and at a glance it has some very good information. So I'll be sure to link this in the show notes as well as the PDF of the actual regulation. And one of the main things around the GDPR is having a privacy policy. And this is the transparency bit where you're letting the end user know all the information that you're collecting, how you're going to use it, and if you're sharing it with third parties. So if you don't have a privacy policy, I highly recommend that you get one. And if you just go to Google and search for a privacy policy generator, and then also include the GDPR, you can see that there are several different sites that will pop up and show you how to generate a privacy policy just by answering a series of questions. Some of these are paid links. I'm not endorsing any of them. However, I have played around with a few of them, and the upwards expense of having ones that are GDPR compliant, I think was about $80, which is a very cheap price to pay considering the penalty fees of violating the regulation. So in this episode, we're going to start with a Ruby on Rails template which has device installed. In the device setup, I simply went to the device gems readme file and I just went through their steps on getting device installed, generating the model, and then creating a couple of links. There's nothing outside the normal configuration that I've done with the sample application, but our end result is going to be logging in. But before we log in, we need to sign up for an account. And when we sign up for the account, we're going to give our information. So we'll just use John Doe. 
at example.com. We'll put in a password, and then we'll have to agree to the terms and conditions. So the first three are mandatory conditions, and the last one is not a mandatory condition, but if we want to allow our information to be sold to third parties, then we would have to proactively agree to that. If you do not agree to all the conditions, then you'll see that when you go to sign up, it'll give us an error. I actually already had this email address taken, but the accept must be accepted to continue. So if you accept all of these, and I'll just put a john.do at one, and then if we sign up, not allowing this last one, you can see that we're authenticated and we're now logged into the website. To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the pro membership.